week eight of my coronavirus log. If you want, you can look in the description and it will give you more details as far as topics and where they're located with a timestamp. Saturday, May 2nd, day 48. I normally do these in the morning, but I'm actually doing it in the evening now. It's uh, a little after six. Uh, absolutely beautiful day. Uh, I'm in my dining room. You can see my yard behind me. Uh, the tree's about ready to explode. Uh, but it was like 70 degrees and just blue skies. Uh, we did our neighborhood social distancing happy hour, um, which was nice. And uh, just got a chance to catch up. You're getting the sense that everybody's especially with the nice weather people are like geez I just want this to be over and go back to normal and so I can understand people's desires to I you know I do too but uh but as we discussed really nothing's changed um until there's a vaccine I don't know the, how safe it's going to be to go out and kind of resume activities like we were before and um, a lot of what we discuss is that we're not going to go quote unquote back to normal that we're going to have to move forward to whatever it's going to look like in the future. So, so we'll see. Um, but anyway, it was a great day. Um, didn't get much done around the house. So sort of laundry and stuff like that. I really should have been doing yard work. It was nice, but it'll be, it'll be there tomorrow. And, uh, and, uh, that's it. Ali Barter, Australian singer, who you may have seen if you've watched any of my previous videos, she's phenomenal, did an interesting thing where she did a tour from inside her house and did a, a song in every room. I'll put a couple of here. There's more on my YouTube channel if you want to check it out. Absolutely gorgeous day again. 
Um, it's supposed to be overcast today, but lucked out and it's, it's beautiful. It's probably 70 degrees, actually 77 according to my Amazon device here. Um, was out doing some yard work, um, visiting the neighbors and stuff. Um, I'll give you my philosophy on yard work. So it, I'm happily divorced. Just I've got a house here out in the burbs, uh, about a half acre of land, kind of typical suburban home. Um, I'm not really that into yard work and stuff. I mean, I got True Green comes and sprays the lawn, got a rotting lawn mower to make sure I get it mowed, weed whacker, all the typical suburban stuff. And some of my neighbors, I love my neighbors, and some of them just keep their lawns meticulously. My theory on my yard and landscaping and everything is basically the bar I set is to make sure that nobody thinks the house is abandoned. So I was kind of approaching that bar. So I was like, I gotta get out and weed some of the gardens and stuff. I, I used to be pretty diligent about going out and planting, uh, <clears throat> uh, planting annuals and you know putting petunias in and, and refreshing all the mulch and stuff. And I really, I'm like, I don't give a shit about that stuff. It's a lot of work and I don't really care about it. Um, so, but I, I try and keep it at least presentable though. So I'm actually due to get some more mulch and uh, I got to do some weed killer and things like that. And, and I realized I'm like, I don't have any weed killer, but the last thing I want to do today is run to Lowe's. Um, it, it's just talking to my neighbors about it and, uh, nothing's, I've said it before, nothing's changed. Uh, so I'm not comfortable going to Lowe's with, you know, hundreds of people, but I'm sure it will be packed. This is the first nice weekend here in upstate New York. Um, some people are going to be out doing just like what I was doing, doing yard work and stuff. So, um, but I did found, you know, I can order Roundup on Amazon. So it'll be here in a week. Weeds can wait till then. Uh, and then I got to get some, some mulch delivered and stuff. I'll probably do that over Memorial Day. But, uh, but anyway, hope everybody's doing well. I'm done with yard work for the day, even though the yard work's not done. It'll be there the rest of the week and the rest of the summer. But at least I've got it looking nice. Um, waiting to get my mower delivered. I've got a, um, and showed them last week that my neighbor Dave actually came over and mowed my lawn for me, which was super nice of him. Um, but what I do, <coughs> excuse me, my neighbors and I, we've got a guy, it's a small repair guy. And what he'll do is he'll, he'll come pick up, he'll drop off my lawnmower here actually next Saturday. Um, and, uh, and he'll, he services that he'll drop it off and then he'll pick up the snowblower. He'll service that during the summer. And it, it works out that basically he just stores it. In the off season so he'll store the snowblower till the fall you know there's always a bit of a race to be like hey mike come on we like now i'm like i need my mower but he'll he'll do it and then my other neighbor actually the guy that mowed the lawn is going to have his snowblower service so it works out well it's you know it's not that expensive sharpens it does what needs to be done change the oils etc um and uh it, it works out great so except i need my mower so i can mow the lawn so rodents are continuing to torture the dog here's a video of sammy with a rabbit in the backyard rabbit right there so sammy saw it and then started moving it just froze and she didn't know what to do now she's just kind of going to the bathroom and doing her thing i cannot believe she didn't chase after she's not chasing after the rabbit because maybe that defense mechanism of, of freezing actually does work for the rabbits oh there he goes <laughs> Somebody posted this on my Facebook timeline. It's pretty accurate, especially as I was going through and updating my calendars. So here's my fridge. Normally I've got a, I'm a planner, OCD planner. So I've got like basically out through November, I'd put in all the stuff that I'd be doing. Obviously all of this stuff has gone by the wayside. You look in May, this, you know, supposed to get shaky knees on there. That's this weekend. You know, next weekend would be the Red Sox playing in the Bronx. Then I was going to go see a show in Vermont, see Bikini Kill. Then Boston Calling, um, Music Festival, that's obviously been canceled. Then just a bunch of all the other Yankee games and different things. I was looking to try and go out to Iowa to see the Field of Dreams game, um, you know, Riot Fest. But I just go through, and every month I'll go in and update the calendar. So I just did, you know, you look at this, all this stuff that's just not going to happen. Um, everything in red is a concert this, the blue stuff for the most part is um yankee games and stuff you know all this stuff in so this is june and july um and you know i, I have actually got tickets to uh the local theater so dear evan hansen is a play um 
just a bunch of stuff that I'm going to end up not seeing. And I just went through and updated for July and August. And same thing, just a bunch. Of stuff. I put it down because a lot of it hasn't been canceled. But, you know, I'm a creature of habit. You know, it's just kind of a bummer. There's tax day that's nice that it's been pricked out. But you look at um, a couple of things that were going to happen locally. Avid Brothers down in Obagon. Drive by Truckers was going to be in Schenectady. That was huge. The National in Omegon and Cooperstown. More Yankee games. The Decemberists. Uh, the Field of Dreams game. So, anyways. It is what it is. Irish punk band, um, the Murder Capital, did a uh, thing where they uh, tweeted along to their album, uh, When I Have Fears. I was so freaking psyched to see these guys. I was going to see them in Philly and then in Albany, and the shows had to get canceled. started watching this new show called Upload on Amazon. The whole premise is you can upload your consciousness at the end of your life up into this virtual world and basically live eternity there and can even interact with people that are still living, uh, just like you would via FaceTime or using an avatar, etc. Um, the key is if you have the money. So interesting. Share some of my nerd side here too. Um, Upload kind of reminds me a bit of the prequel to Battlestar Galactica called Caprica. The whole premise there was the same thing. You can upload your consciousness into this virtual world, and it led them to basically creating the Cylons, who became an AI that basically became self-aware and, uh, and led to the Battlestar Galactica series. Check it out. Monday, May 4th, day 50. Um, early afternoon, I'm in between meetings. Uh, watch Governor Cuomo's update. Oh, I continue to contrast the style and way he's handling things to President Trump. And uh, and I'm guessing that someday there's going to be, you know, they're going to teach classes and compare and contrast those two as well. You know, one is a way not to do things and one is a way to do things. Um, the plan he's outlining for you know, looking at the conditions to reopen New York uh, it really makes sense to me. It's not making it about himself. Uh, one of the things he's doing is looking at the categories of businesses, and this is the way I would attack the problem as well, is you look at what is the most beneficial with the least risk, those get priority, and then you conversely, the ones that have the highest risk with the least positive impact are going to be the last to open. Unfortunately, those are also some of the things that I like to do the most. So you're talking sporting events and entertainment, things like and concerts. Businesses. Well, which businesses do we open first? You open businesses first that are most essential and pose the lowest risk, okay? Most essential and the lowest risk. Uh, phase one, we're talking about construction, manufacturing, and select retail with curbside pickup. They are the most essential with the lowest risk. Second phase, professional services, retail, administrative support, real estate. Third phase, restaurant, food services, accommodation. Fourth, arts, entertainment, recreation, education. So we'll see. Um, one thing that's come out that's really kind of disturbing and not surprising is the CDC is now raising the forecast for infections and deaths. Um, as a result of a lot of these southern states reopening. Um, yeah, it's just really disheartening to see that. And we'll see. Hopefully it doesn't hold true, but I think it probably will. Um, other news, uh, Don Shula died actually today, today or yesterday, uh, the former coach of both the Dolphins and um, Baltimore, the, uh, not the Orioles, the, uh, the Baltimore Colts. And, of course, he had the perfect season back in, I think it was 72. Um so, yeah, the world's going on. It's pretty chilly out today. It's about 20 degrees colder than it was. I had the windows open. I actually had to, uh, to close them, even though I like getting the fresh air. Uh, just too freaking cold to be out. So, so we'll see. So if things weren't crazy enough, uh, just down the road from me, there was a landslide that impacted, I guess, four houses that they had to evacuate as everything slid down the hill away from me. You can see the pictures here. It's pretty bad.
So I saw this Australian band, Skeggs, last year at Boston Calling, and they did a live stream today. They're great. They're kind of like surfer punk, but Australian. Are we live? Sound in tune, you guys. It is the oh yeah, they said to build it out, tune it up a little bit. The most important thing. Please. Thanks so much, Jason. <laughs> I think the the most important thing is th is the first I is to have a tune. It must just be the way I play or something. <laughs> What do that? Day 51, happy Cinco de Mayo. Um, cold out today. They're actually talking about a possibility of snow later in the week, which is not unheard of for early May in upstate New York, but certainly less than ideal. Um, had a buddy stop by for beers last night, uh, maintained our social distance. Uh, he's actually in the Guard, in the New York National Guard, and he, he's been deployed. Tell me some of the stories about um, his time down in Westchester County where they had a really bad outbreak. Help set up a, uh, a hospital and stuff down there, and about some of the other uh, duties that the guard has, uh, has picked up. For instance, New York City, um, the funeral homes can't keep up with the um, death toll, with the bodies that are there that are having to been picked up. So the National Guard is actually helping out with some of the funeral homes and some of the, the military mortuary duties going around and assisting with getting people who passed away in their homes. Um, taken care of, which is pretty morbid, and boy, what a tough freaking job for some, you know, 22-year-old kid who just signed up uh, for the Guard to get money for college or something. You know, it's not getting shot at, obviously, and a lot of these guys have been to, to Iraq and Afghanistan, but still, that's tough, um, so, uh, so pretty sobering, but good to have a couple of beers with him as well. Um, I've got Instacart delivering later on today. Interesting note about that, when I first started using it, this will be my third time, it was tough to get a delivery slot, and you'd be waiting three or four days if they had one. Uh, when I signed up for this, I want to say it was over the weekend, um, I could have had it delivered an hour later. So either people are using it less and are more comfortable going to the grocery store, or they staffed up and now have adequate staff for deliveries, or probably a combination of both. But 
since then I can afford to do it, uh, you know, I'm staying away from the grocery store as much as I can, which shit, not like I enjoy going to the damn grocery store anyway, let's face it, but, um, but I'm going to continue to use it, so that's going to be delivered this afternoon. Wednesday, May 6th, um, day 52 of the quarantine. It's lunchtime right now, actually a little bit after lunch. Um, something news from yesterday, um, one of the things I'm, I, I'm actually excited about is that Fontaine's DC, who's one of my favorite bands, uh, discovered them last year. Uh, they're a band out of Dublin. Uh, the DC stands for Dublin City. Released the title track to their sophomore album um, called A Hero's Death, which is also the name of the album. Now, I discovered these guys. Um, I heard about them in November of 18, maybe early December. I was actually down in the city um, to see the whole city for their Massive Nights uh, weekend show. Um, and instead of seeing them on Friday, the Middle Kids, this um, Australian band that I really like, was playing the Bowery Ballroom. So I went to catch the show Friday night at the Bowery Ballroom, and I'm hanging out up front just chatting with some of the folks there. And one of the photographers there was, you know, we're comparing bands and stuff like that. And he's like, hey, have you heard Fontaine's DC? And I said, no, I hadn't. And he was just raving about them. They'd come through earlier that year in the city, not very long before. And uh, and he caught them, I think, out at, uh, uh, I don't know, it was the Music Hall of Williamsburg or wherever. But um, but he's like, hey, you got to check them out. So I get on my phone and check. And I'm like, oh, shit, they're coming to Albany opening for Idols in like two months. So, actually more, it was in April that I ended up seeing them. So, but I listened to them, and they fucking blew me away. Uh, the way I describe it is, it's like I was a teenager again, and hearing The Clash or The Ramones for the first time. The album is just awesome. Uh, Craig Finn from The Whole Steady, the lead singer, and, and I uh, talked about it a little bit, and he, he nailed it perfectly. He's like, it's like they were genetically engineered to my taste. So love their initial album, Dog Roll. Um, got a chance to actually meet them uh, after after they played. Talked with Carlos, the guitarist, super nice guy. And it was actually funny because um, um, Dennis from uh, Flog Molly was actually there. He lives in Rochester. He'd come up just to check them out because they were just the talk of the music industry. And he was there to talk to them, see if they would go on tour or something like that. I ended up having a good time. Really enjoyed hanging with him as well. But I got to talk to Carlos, and uh, and he found out I, I mentioned that I was going to London and then to Dublin the next month to see Yankees Red Sox. And he's like, hey, give me your phone. I'm going to give you a list of places to go catch and check out in Dublin while you're there. So he gave me a list of like four or five different bars and uh, and pubs. So I ended up being able to check out three or four of them, including uh, the Liberty Bell, which they actually wrote a song about. So I actually went and had a pint at the Liberty Bell. But um Super nice guys, young guys. They're all like my daughter's age, but uh, but really enjoyed them. And um, and then they came back and they actually did a headlining tour in September. And I was going to take some time off to go see my daughter up in Vermont anyway. So it was right after Labor Day. So I was like, screw it, I'm going to take the week off. And I went and saw them. Um, so what did I see them? I saw them. Saw them at Music Hall of Williamsburg in Brooklyn. Then I saw them in. Boston, and then I saw him again in at the Bowery Ballroom. So, so uh, I didn't go to Philly because I went and saw the Rockin' Tours that night. But I ended up hanging out with those guys. And funny story, God bless them. Um, I'd gotten a bunch of their shows sold out, so I was able to get tickets. But then for Boston, I ended up getting a ticket on eBay. And ironically, in Brooklyn, uh, the opening act Pottery, who's also very good. Um, Got to know those guys, chatted with them a little bit, and they're like, hey, let us put you on the list for Boston. I'm like, nah, I appreciate it, man. I already bought a ticket on on, on, uh, on StubHub, so in the secondary market. So um, I ended up coming home, you know, taking the train home from, from New York, pop into the house, just throw clean clothes, you know, in, into a bag and, and drive out to Boston. So I get there, check into the hotel, and I'm getting ready to go to the venue, Great Scott, which actually is now closing down, unfortunately. Um, and I realize, I'm like, shit, I left the ticket. It was an old school paper ticket on my refrigerator at home. I'm like, shit. So I try and get a hold of the guys from Pottery, but I'm looking at, well, first thing I do is check the uh, aftermarket. And there's nothing available. Um, so then I check, uh, reach out to the guys from Pottery, and I'm like, any chance that offer's still open? But I, I look at my watch, I'm like, these guys are doing sound check right now, which it turns out they were. So I'm like, let me just show up at the venue. Maybe they're either, either releasing tickets at the door or else I'll just be able to find somebody scalping one there. So um, 
So I get there, they're like, nope, completely sold out. I'm like, shit. So I'm like, let me just hang out for a little bit. And then uh, Grin and Carlos walk out, the lead singer and Carlos, the guitarist, um, walk out and they're like, oh, hey, Craig. Because, you know, I'd gotten a chance to talk to them. And uh, so I explained the situation. They're like, yeah, let us put you on the list. Um, what really shocked me about them, actually, it's kind of backing up a little bit. You know, I talked talk to Carlos in, in April in Albany at the venue. Fast forward to September, you know, so here it is, what, five months later, um, and I'm at the venue and, and uh, at the Music Hall of Williamsburg, and I'm right where Carlos is, and he comes walking out, and he looks out, and he's like, hey, Albany, he's like, you check out those pubs that I that I recommended to you. I couldn't believe I, that he remembered me. It's not like, I, not like I asked him, hey, do you remember me? You know, we could just say, uh, sure, of course I remember you. So, uh, but I ended up hanging out with these guys quite a bit after the shows and stuff like that and just chatting with them, really good guys. And uh, they were telling me that they already had that most of the second album was basically written and they were going right from New York, finishing up the tour and going to be putting the uh, the album down out in L.A. Uh, and he even mentioned an album or one of the singles, him and uh, and uh, I think it's Connor Curley. There's two Connors in the band, but they got stuck in an elevator in Brussels for like an hour and a half. And they were just like, what the fuck? But uh, once they finally got out of the elevator, it actually inspired them to write a song. And at the, he was telling me about this uh, at, at this bar right around the corner from the Bowery. And uh, and he's like, yeah, right now the working title is You Said. And and I just checked the list for the new album that's coming out on July 31st. And sure, shit, it's on there. So I'm interested to hear it. But uh, but I'll put some links and some, some of the stuff up here. So that was a good day yesterday. Get good new music. And uh, I'm hoping I get to see these guys live again soon. Um, they actually had a, uh, they put it together something to benefit the homeless, like the first week of March in Dublin. And it was them, the Murder Capital, who's also phenomenal, another band out of out of Ireland, and Just Mustard, another Irish band that I actually went up and saw in, um, in Montreal. They were all doing this one night, and I was like, shit, I was this close from flying over there to see it. Um, I literally had both airfare and um, a ticket for the show in my cart, and I'm like, I can't fly over on a fucking Tuesday to Dublin, just fly over, see it, and then come back. In retrospect, I kind of wish I had, uh, because, you know, now, you know, we're on lockdown, then it probably would have been the smartest thing, either health-wise or financially, so. But anyway, that's that's my story. It's empty. Life ain't always empty. Don't get stuck in the past. Say your favorite things at mass. Tell your mother that you love her I go out of your way for others Sit beneath the light that suits you And look forward to a brighter future Life ain't always empty just so much good music coming out of the Dublin and Ireland scene in general. Um, in addition to Fontaine CC, you got the Murder Capital and a bunch of other bands. Um, coming up, you got a live stream from the lead singer of Thumper. Uh, give it a listen. I also put in an outtake of the same song from Spotify because honestly, it sounds a lot different, I think, better with the full band. When I'm in my room Milk Cuddles in the sun And when I'm in my room Bring all magnet to the haystack When I'm in my room Cut eyes glare through the smoke Day 53 of the quarantine. Um, ESPN has started broadcasting uh, Korean baseball, KBO, Korean Baseball Organization, uh, because it's the only baseball being played. 
Uh, the problem is with the time zone difference, the games are at like 3 or 5 a.m. here in New York. So I started DVRing them and uh, actually been watching the Doosan Bears take on the LG Twins uh, in between meetings. It's just so good to watch baseball again. Um, I'm finding myself being like, why aren't you taking this pitcher out? He's getting him shelled. I mean, I could care less about these games. Um, but it's still fun to watch. I actually did get to see Korean baseball. Uh, I work in global supply chain, so I travel internationally. And two years ago, I was in Korea, and ended up watching the uh, Lotte Giants out of Busan uh, play a game. And it's really a trip, much similar to Japanese baseball, which I've been lucky enough to see a couple of Nippon Baseball League games as well. Um, one in Tokyo, one in um, Yokohama. So, but just kind of interesting. Here's some footage from that game that I attended two years ago. I hope you get a kick out of it. I made a friend when I got this ball and gave it to this little girl. She was adorable.